my friends, what's going on? All right, who's ready for part two of this chain guide guard contraption I got going on over here? So I got some parts today. Got a mess going on over here, my little work area. Move some stuff around. So I got the hardware. I got uh, some crank arm bolts, black, true vative, vative. Uh, this brand right here. These are the stock ones right here. A little bit thicker, a little bit heavier. A little rusty up in there. I don't like that. So they got these 47 to, let's see, what does it say on there? 47 to 54 Newton meters of torque. So a lot of people complain these come off on the Rockstar. You got to torque these bad boys down and um, play some blue Loctite on here. All right. So this right here, this is what I'm going with. This is my chain guard guide contraption that I'm building. And I've had some suggestions on how to run this adapter and my chain ring. So I'm going to follow those uh, suggestions from a, a fellow commenter on YouTube. I had these spacers right here. I had to drill these out. So these new little uh, pieces could fit through here. Oil slick color. That's kind of cool. Not really, you know, oil slick, whatever. Chrome looks good. Quality looks good. These are all off Amazon. So a little longer shafts on these to fit all this stuff together. So let's get started. Got my Simple Pleasures apparel on. Wear it every day. You don't? Okay, anyway. So here's my Dex chain ring. Here's my adapter. The way I used to run this was with the adapter back behind here like this. Somebody suggested, why don't you run it on the inside like so? He said, said, if you look down the line of your chain, down that to your rear sprockets or your cassette, it lines up better. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to put all this together right now, but I'm going to run that chain ring on the inside of this adapter. So you can see it can go either way on the front or the back. So I'm gonna try it like that on the inside. And then on top of that is gonna be this bash guard. And then I'm gonna have my spacers, right? Like so. And this on top of all that. So that's basically gonna be the build. And my idea is the chain is gonna fit right in there. All my parts are falling out, it's okay. I'll pick them up. So then your chain, fits right at, down inside there just like that. And hopefully this will prevent it from jumping off this way and this way. So let's put this all together and um, see if it works. So this is gonna start at the bottom or the outside. I'm gonna place that face down with, um, you know, these going right through there like that. So now I got these longer ones, you can see all that thread I have plenty of thread, plenty of bite. So everything, once it's all sandwiched on here together, it should all go together nicely like that. And this oil slick color, it's kind of cool. kind of like it. Now this stuff all came off of Amazon. So I'll share the links in the description, but um, let's flip this over and start this build. So there's the chain in there, and someone did ask if this chain ring is a narrow wide. Uh, yes, it is. Most definitely. That's all I run. And so you can see the spacing now, how the chain's going to sit in there between this bash guard at the bottom and this bash guard in the back. And we'll see if that works. See if that's the uh, problem solver to keep my chain from bouncing out. Disco. All right, so there it is. Final product. Feels solid. Everything's tight. I snugged everything up. And you can see now how that chain is going to go inside there, like so. It should ride right in there. Hopefully it won't bounce out. All right, ready to reinstall on the bike. Think it's going to work? I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, so basically everything in reverse order. Let me see if I remember how to work on a bike. Just kidding. So drop the chain on there. We've got our nut. It goes on here. Remember it's a reverse thread. 35 newton meters so let me put some blue loctite on that and we'll install it 
All right, nice little drop in there. Make sure it's on there straight because these threads are really fine. I'm gonna have to use that chain whip. Now I got the chain whip on here and I'm just tightening this nut. Nothing too exciting. So I don't know where everyone lives, but I'm in uh, Southern California. And today and yesterday we had a little bit of rain, but today we had quite a storm. It's like when it rains here, we get it all at once. But it's nice to get a little moisture. It's gonna make for those um, trails a lot better quality. Let me throw this chain on here. And I wanna check that chain alignment. They said the chain alignment is better with that chain ring towards the middle. So let's check that out right now. Come on over here. We're gonna look down the line. And tell me what you think. So we're looking at that chain running along here all the way back. Looks good to me from here. What do you guys think? What I did was the chain used to sit on the outside of this adapter and now I moved it to the inside of the adapter so it can go either way. I didn't even think about that. So that was a very good suggestion. Thank you. So it's sitting in there now. Hopefully this, you know, this little guard right here and this one too, it'll keep that chain from jumping off this way and jumping off this way. It's really hard to find, um, I don't think anyone makes a chain guide for this Bafang M620 motor, at least none that I've found. I've seen, I think the M600 motor, there is uh, a chain guide that does mount to the motor, but I honestly, I can't find anything for the Bafang M620. If anyone has any knowledge out there, please share it with all of us. But I'm just trying to keep this chain from bouncing off. Can you hear that? That's the motor. That's an, that annoying sound you hear when I'm riding and I hate it, but it's just that little bit of play inside there, the bearings, I guess. Not the uh, best tolerances on this motor, but it is a brute of a motor. It's a beast, tons of torque, it gets the job done. And so far, pretty damn reliable. So we're gonna put the crank back on and the pedal and we should be good to go. Okay, so I'm using these new Truvative or Truvative crank arm bolts. A little bit of blue Loctite, of course. Put that crank arm on. And when you put the crank arm on, you want it exactly 180 degrees opposite of your other crank arm. I know, sounds silly, but people have done it in the past. You can see here, that one on the back side. This one is exactly the opposite. I know, silly little thing, but People do make that mistake. And now the new crank arm bolt. Always start everything by hand. Make sure you're not crossing threads. Look at that. Oh, that looks good with that Miranda crank. Black on black. And these gotta be 47 to 54 Newton meters. And yes, I do have a torque wrench. But there's that. Check that out, a little close up. It's a really nice finish. I like that. I'll torque this down, then I'll put the pedals on. All right, so I got this assortment of uh, hex bits or Allen bits, and this is the one we're gonna use today. Fits right in there, like so. I believe it is a eight millimeter. I got this torque wrench right here. EP Auto, EP Auto, yeah, that's what it says. Anyway, nice little torque wrench, and I have my fitting right here for that bit, and we're just gonna set the torque to 47 newton meters and we're going to torque it down and i found this on amazon so i'll try to remember to link this tool in the description but if i don't just check on um, amazon you can see right there i don't know if you can see that this camera is not the best for close-ups this is the gopro 10. anyway it says newton meter settings right there we're going to set that right now okay so we got that set get that in there and we're just going to torque this down almost there there we go. There it is. You hear that little, there we go. Okay, now time for the pedal. All right, so in the past, I might've mentioned putting blue Loctite on your pedals. You do not want to do that. So I use Never Seize. And I just put a little tiny bit on here, on the threads, because pedals are pretty much self-tightening. The rotation, the pedal on your right side, your drive side, is a righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. The pedal on your left side, non-drive side, is the opposite. It's lefty tidy, righty loosey. So when you're going forward with your pedals, they're self-tightening. So no need to put blue Loctite 
on pedal threads, but you do want to use kind of like a anti-seize. This is what I have right here. This is some good stuff. Just a little dab of that on your threads, like so. Boom, should be good to go. You won't have to worry about tough pedals to remove in the uh, future. Just thought I'd share that. Once again, start this by hand so you're not cross-threading. These pedals are pretty fine thread. All right, so there it is. Pedal on, crank arms back on. The new crank bolt in black looks really good. Chain guide guard on. And the alignment. Once again, you might have to zoom in. That's what we're looking at all the way back. I might have to stick this on the bike stand and adjust my derailleur. I might not, but I'll find out this weekend if everything works correctly. So there it is, chain guide guard combo for the Rockstar and some new crank arm bolts. And I'll link all these parts in the description if you want to attempt this. And that's it for tonight. I think we're done. Now all, all we have to do is uh, test it on some chunk. I also have to turn it around and do the other side because I still have that old chrome crank arm bolt that came stock on this bike. I'm gonna switch it to the black. Just finish it up. All right, everybody, thanks for watching once again. Stay stoked, have a good night. And if you do get a chance, check out Johnny Lube, this e-bike rated chain lube. I'm going to try that out this weekend also. JohnnyLube.com or Johnny.Lube on Instagram. All right, real quick, I just flipped the bike around, replaced that crank arm bolt. This is the other side of her, and she is ready to rock, rock star. All right, I think we're done. Pretty much buttoned up. I like that crank arm bolt. That's nice. Nice finish. Uh, there's my little uh, temperature gauge I have on here. The motor has never even registered, and I think the lowest temp on here is, uh, what is it, 149 Fahrenheit. It goes all the way up to 248. I've never even seen it register at 149, and that's even on like a 100 you know, degree day. So just I just put that on there just to check if the motor ever gets hot, which it doesn't because it has that corn head grease treatment in it. Stays pretty dang quiet, Bafang M620. And someday soon, I'm gonna crank, crack this motor case apart just to look at that grease inside to see what it's doing. And that'll be a future video down the road. Okay, so I'm gonna run through the gears really quick. Let's just check the alignment. See how it's shifting with the new position. Oh, I might need some adjustment. My back brake is rubbing. I noticed that last ride. So here we go. Just want to make sure where I have that new front chain ring position. It doesn't really mess with my shifting. All right, so it's getting to every gear, no problem. The alignment up front looks good. I'll show you that. Okay, so there's that front. You can see that. I'm gonna go through the gears again. No rubbing. Shifting smoothly. Probably use some Johnny Lube on that chain. It's a little bit dry. There we go though. Okay, I'm happy with that. Listen to that new hub hum. Always like the sound of that. So I hope that's a success. I hope it works out this weekend. Um, we won't know until we, you know, you know, ride it over some really rough terrain and put it through the ringer, put it through the test. But there it is, the top view. That's what we're looking at here. I think it's going to be a success. What do you guys think? Franken bike. This bike. None of the rules apply to this bike. <laughs> you gotta figure this bike out, you know, play with it, make it your own. That's one joy I honestly can say I get from this bike is just everything I've done to it, it's pretty much me and my friends, you know? All the things we've done to these bikes just makes it so unique. 
Got my spare tire right there, strapped on there. And I do run tubeless, but I always carry a spare tube. Last ride, it wasn't me, but one of our fellow riders on um, Rex, he got a flat on his bike. So, you know, I had a spare tire or a tube for him. Save the day. I do see the sidewalls leaking a little bit, but it's not bubbling. It's a slow leak, but that's the sealant doing its job right there. We put these bikes through the ringer and I'm loving every minute of it. The builds, the riding, the friendships, uh, the Facebook, the community, everything about this bike, you know, it's brought about, you know, a lot of joy. And if you love mountain biking or biking in general, um, check out our Facebook page, Rockstar Rebel Riders. It's, you know, 99% 0.9% solely focused on this bike right here, the Rockstar Sondors first gen bike and the second gen bike. And really the only difference in the first and second gen is the brakes were different. Um, a couple little subtle things, but mainly it was the brakes. The brakes were different. They went from a Tektro to a Clark. Um, there might've been a couple other minor changes, but for the most part, the bikes are pretty much the same first and second gen. It's a beast of a bike, everyone knows. 80 plus pounds and people can dog on it all they want but when you have it built to handle you know the stuff that we ride it's a dream to ride it's uh yeah it's a diamond in the rough <laughs> all right everyone thanks for watching appreciate all of you and good night